LSU basketball. Tigers are set to get on the road for the next two games starting tomorrow. They'll be in South Carolina for a 5 o'clock tip-off before traveling to Gainesville on Tuesday night. LSU's next home is February 29th against Texas A&M where they will retire Mahmoud abdul Rauf's number 35 during halftime. You've seen some of the images that have come out for this. Um, we were steady complimenting the graphics department during football season with their social media work. The basketball tribute to Chris Jackson, Mahmoud abdul Rauf is fantastic. Some of the images that are coming out. Will Wade and the crew on the road tomorrow, South Carolina, for a 5 o'clock tip-off, which means 4.30 pregame for you on Eagle 98.1. LSU baseball is going to play host to Eastern Kentucky at the box this weekend. Friday night, tonight, 7 o'clock, first pitch tomorrow, 3 o'clock, and then Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Looks like the weather's going to be beautiful this weekend. This weekend series About marks time. the first meeting between LSU and Eastern Kentucky, which is a member of the Ohio Valley Conference. Starting pitchers for you tonight, Cole Henry. Tomorrow, Landon Marceau. And on Sunday, A.J. Labus will be on the, uh, will be on the starting mound for, uh, for LSU. LSU football, the Southeastern Conference today uh, announced its annual football media days will take place July 13th through the 16th. Returning to the College Football Hall of Fame in Omni Atlanta Hotel at CNN Center, which also hosted the event in 2018. LSU's head coach Ed Ogeron, the 2019 National Coach of the Year, after leading the Tigers to a 15-0 mark in the national title, will lead off the four-day event. Love, Love that. It. As he will take the podium on Monday First morning pitch. at July 13th. So uh, ESPN could be in and out of there pretty quick. Uh, yeah, ESPN it's, Baton Rouge. Well, I mean, you know, when you have two quick, can't sing karaoke if you don't hang out for a couple days. I was about to say, how's T-Bob going to act up yeah, if he can't be there I mean, for a while? Come on. Uh, that said, it's it's crazy what a different, you know, the, what a difference a couple of years can make. Wasn't it just two years ago at SEC Media's Day? Coach O basically set up there and just read off the depth chart, yeah. and everybody was like, Ooh, I just, this Next. Is, yeah, like this is not the best show. And now they got my man, and he's going to be feeling confident. He's going to be feeling good. He's going to be leading off the ceremonies. Let's go. Well deserved for Coach O. By all accounts, he was a rock star at the head coaches' meetings in Birmingham last week. Did you uh, see Nick Saban? How was Lane? Lane was great. Lane hadn't changed a bit. Yeah. Word on the street is. Yeah. Um, Big just, jokester. You see Alabama football is recreating Panamski's uh, position? I did. I did. How about Derek, that? Derek Panamski now in direct competition with Butch Jones and Dwight Schrute as assistants <laughs> to the regional managers. Assistants Alabama. to the head coach. Yeah, Butch Jones announced the uh, special assistant to the head coach. Same title that Panamski well, wears okay, here in okay. Baton so, so, like, all kind of funny Dwight Schrute jokes aside, um, this is interesting because it shows – that there's value to the spot. Well, it shows that O was ahead of the curve with this kind of chief of staff right hand man position where you know how Saban a lot of times, at least in these parts, and maybe this is inaccurate, I'm sure somebody else will source it somewhere, but like we credit Saban with kind of leaning into the shadow staff and just bringing on droves of analysts and everybody else following suit. Well, here you have Coach O being the first to kind of have this chief of staff position and have all the success, and now you see. Uh, coach Saban following suit. Yes, yeah, Saban announced Butch Jones, a special assistant to the head coach. He also announced that Steve Sarkeesian was remaining on staff and getting a, a, a raise there as the offensive coordinator. Charlie Strong was hired as a defensive analyst in Tuscaloosa, and he brought Freddie Roach it's over. A pretty good defensive analyst. He there. brought <laughs> he brought Freddie Roach over from Ole Miss, from Lane Kiffin's staff, with the only point to get um, McKinley Jackson, the defensive tackle oh, out of Mississippi. Wow. He ended up going womp to Texas womp. A&M. Oh. That's a little awkward. I think awkward. Freddie's walking around the coach's office. <laughs> Wait, Freddie Roach, like, not the boxing guy, Freddie Roach, obviously. No. This no, the is former a Alabama football. linebacker. This, okay, yeah. Uh, that's going to be awkward for him in those coaches' little meetings. A little weird. When he sits down and, and there's no... It'd be no a lot Mc different if we got McKinley Jackson, right, Freddie? <laughs> Ooh, uh, the He's New Orleans be on Pelicans. His ass all year long. Pelicans entering the second half of the season tonight. They're four point favorites in Portland, taking on the Trailblazers. Looked like they could be out without uh, playing without Damian Lillard. Uh, tip time is set for 9 30 tonight for Zion and the Pelicans getting back to work in the second half of the NBA season. The NFL's proposed collective bargaining agreement is one step closer to becoming reality as the owners voted on Thursday to accept the negotiated terms. Owners. We're not unanimous to voting to approve the proposed CBAs, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. It is not known how the New Orleans Saints owner, Gail Benson, voted. The NFL, uh, Sean Payton, was speaking uh, on WWL 
about the news of Drew Brees coming back. Um, he was asked, what does contract make look like? Listen, I, it's a great question. Look, I would, I would say this to both Drew and Mickey. Um, you know, here we are however many years, and every, every time that subject has come up, and it's come up a number of times, in other words, where they're working on a contract, they always seem to get it done in, in, in an efficient manner, and, uh, and I think that, uh, that that won't be any different this time around. Listen, it's John Payton's favorite way to answer yeah. a question. Look, listen, yeah. look, Head look, up. listen. Uh, Sean Payton was talking about the role of Taysom Hill here. Well, there's two two ways to go about it. Number one, we can sign him to a deal before the league year starts, and you never get to that point. I think if he was unsigned prior to the league year, I would anticipate us really paying close attention to that and and, and looking at that first round tender. Now, I think it'll it'll be that'll that'll take some time relative to his contract because it's unique a in what he's doing now and and what we feel like he can be and what he can do. You know, when when Drew does retire, so that, that will probably take a little bit more work than the contract that Mickey does with Drew. Yeah, so that first-round tender, how, how that would work, if, if they put that on Taysom Hill, then a team can offer Hill, be restricted free age, right? And a team can offer Hill, and the Saints can choose, okay, we'll either match that, but if they don't match, then that team would have to give up their first-round pick to the Saints. So it's nearly a guarantee that Taysom Hill will be back in a Saints uniform next year. The bigger question is, and maybe we get to this today's show, I know we have a lot to get to, but is who are the Saints going to pay this offseason? Because you got Ramchick, Lattimore, and Kamara. Now you can do fifth year options on Ramchick and Lattimore, but Kamara, it's he's going to the final year here. It's probably time for him to get that extension. Just what does that price look like? Some more NFL sound from yesterday. Zach Taylor, who's the Cincinnati Bengals head coach, stopped by the Bengals Beat podcast and was asked about the possibility of selecting Joe Burrow number one overall. Well, he's he's put a lot of great things on tape. He's one of several guys that we've studied. Um, you can certainly see why he's in that conversation. He led the team to a championship. That goes a long way. Certainly guys that are winners and guys that have, have won championships, those are all the things that we're trying to achieve. Um, and so it's he certainly has, has put himself in that position. And it's well-deserved on his end.